My name is Mark Patterson, and I'm the Business Development Manager here at Shunk for Cobots. Today, I'm happy to have you guys here for RIA Week. We're going to talk about standard end of arm tooling for lightweight robots and cobots. We're going to start it off by talking about collaborative grippers. Okay. So the first one I've got here is our Coact EGPC series. It's a collaborative electric gripper that plugs onto the end of the robot. So it's plug and play, comes with all the mounting hardware and the electrical connection plugs directly into the tool port or directly into the robot. So it's pretty darn easy to use. So if you need a really simple electric gripper for whatever application you're doing, this is a great option comes in four different sizes. We have one of our middle sizes on here right now. I'm going to pick up our largest size. So this is our Coact EGPC 64. Has 20 millimeters of overall stroke and quite a bit of grip force for a collaborative, collaborative uh, gripper. What's really cool about these is we do offer them in standard finger packages as well. So we got some on this guy right here. And then on this one right here, we've actually 3D printed those fingers. So if you have an application where you wanna 3D print your fingers so that they're really custom to your part, and be able to get them done quick, you can do that. Um, so it's a great gripper for collaborative projects. Now, let's say you still wanna use a Cobot, but you need something with a little bit more force, a little more power, more traditional automation, right? You've got heavier parts or you're doing machine tending and you want something that's really gonna live in that machine. We make another series called Plug and Work Portfolio and it covers a whole series of cobots for us. And what this portfolio is, is it's a bunch of standard grippers that we've taken out of our catalog and we've made them so that they're, once again, plug and work to these robots. I've got one here right now. This is our long stroke gripper, right? It's also IP67 sealed, so it's great for those long differences in parts uh, where you need that longer stroke. But what's kind of cool about it is, right, so we have the gripper and then we have our fingers. Uh, this little block right here actually has our valves in it. It also has our sensor I.O. block. So our sensors plug directly into this and we have one tube and one cable out and this plugs directly into the end of arm. Now let's say that you have a cylindrical part, right? Now that we have this two jaw, you wanna switch over to a three jaw gripper. Well, not a problem. If you use our manual tool changing system, all you gotta do is pull this handle back 180 degrees and pop the gripper off. And as you can see, we've kept all of our tubing on here. We've kept our cabling intact. We don't need to hook anything else up. So it's really simple and easy to use. And you take your other gripper and you just line it back up onto the tool changer like so and you just close the handle and you're off to the races so the plug and work portfolio we've got pneumatic grippers with high force we've got electric grippers in them two jaw and three jaw so moving on the last series i'm going to talk about is one of my personal favorites it's called flex grip tools it's a flexible modular end of arm tool system that's really designed so you as the manufacturer as the automation engineer can design your own end of arm tooling without going into CAD, without sending stuff off to a machine shop. It all uses standard components and connections so that you can create dual end of arm tools like this. And we'll get a close up of this guy right now. As you can see, it's two grippers, right? And this is really great for load unload on your machines, right? You're doing CNC machine tending or even lathe tending. You wanna reach in the side and pick up that cylindrical billet, right? Uh, what's cool about flex grip tools also, we have them in a different bunch of different sized grippers. So we have four or five different size two jaw grippers. We've got a couple different three jaw size grippers. We've got electric grippers in this uh, series and it uses all these modular connections. So we can actually adjust this angle in and out to make it easier. We make these fingers that are just standard components for us and you can adjust the grip position on these base jaws here. We've got rubber padded fingers. If you remove these, we have a flat metal finger. Uh, on this guy, we have our dual V jaw finger. So you can pick up cylindrical parts, either axially or radially. And then uh, if you're using our pneumatic components and you say, well, I don't wanna go through the trouble of figuring out my pneumatic valve bank. We've got you covered too, right? We have this VB25 is what we call it, but that's not important. It's a valve bank. 
with a sensor I.O. block. So it's got four valves for your two grippers here. It's got uh, M8 socket plug connectors for your sensors. And then it's a single cable and a single tube. So it's super neat going down back to your controller and it's all actuated via digital signals. So super easy to set up, super easy to get going. It's fast, simple, and it uses our proven grippers from Shunk. I'm gonna show one more flex grip tool just to kind of show the variety that you can do. Um, these are all done using essentially the same components um, except the gripper. And this one, we're not using any valves. We're just using a standard adapter plate because we don't need it, right? It's an electric gripper. Um, and what we've done here is we've used our basic construction kit, which houses all of these little components and connectors that you see in both these tools to create an offset here. And this particular end of arm tool is used for um, part assembly, right? So we're gonna pick up a part in these fingers, right, with the rubber pads. And then what we're actually gonna be doing is we're gonna go and try and insert that part into a, a hole or a slot. And sometimes when you're doing that, you need a little bit of give, right? If it's a tight fit or if it's at an odd angle. So we actually added in this compensation unit that can compensate all directions, the Z and theta and rotational just a little bit so that we have that extra little bit of float. And we can do that all with FlexScript tools and it's all standard components. So I'd like to thank you all for joining me today. I hope everyone's had a great time during this RIA Robotics Week and give us a call and join us next time.